Have we learned all that much? I think that um, it depends on who we is. So the, the academic literature has learned a lot about financial regulation, in fact, just over the last nine years. And what we've learned is that we're on the wrong track, that what we've done is a flop. Um, if you ask me whether the average American has learned it, I think the problem is there's a disconnect. And so part of what I'm trying to do with this book is exactly, and the reason it's a short book, is I'm trying to actually bridge that disconnect. Within the disconnect is a basic idea that James Diamond has had to go out and hire a gajillion people to do Dodd-Frank, to do compliance or whatever. What are all those people doing? Many of them are lawyers or are basically dealing with compliance issues. Uh, a lot of them are actually doing a new function of financial regulation, which is law enforcement. Basically, the U.S. government had a great idea. Instead of the U.S. government having to pay for law enforcement, why not just require banks to do it for free? Uh, of course, the problem is that means the bank stockholders are paying for it. But the burden's not just on uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, and in fact, it's disproportionately on the smaller banks because they really can't afford that overhead. That is uh, one of the bigger new areas of cost. But the bigger problem in regulation that I go through in the book is that it's not working. That is, for all the costs that we're creating, we're not getting anything for it. And furthermore, the new approach toward regulation uh, is a process that is contrary to the rule of law. And so the combination of big cost, no outcome, and threatening the rule of law with these new sort of Kafkaesque processes is really a very powerful negative one. All right, Charles, give me a sense of what we know about the, the reforms that the Trump administration actually wants. So we've heard about the modern Glass-Steagall. I mean, what do we know that will actually happen at this point? I don't know what the Trump administration wants. I know that uh, they have a stated intent to question regulation. I think that's a good thing. I also know who is working in the Trump administration who knows something about financial regulation, and that's very encouraging. They're names that you're not, uh, you don't hear reported. Uh, Andrew Ullman uh, at the National Economic uh, Council, uh, Mar Mark Calabria uh, in the vice president's office. So actually, they have uh, good people and they, they have a general, I think, orientation toward questioning the uh, cost benefit of regulation, but I don't think they've really uh, enunciated where they're going exactly. The real thought leadership is coming from Jeb Henserling uh, in the House. Uh, Charles, do you think that they will stick with international agreements? There was talk, and this really instilled fear in a lot of the international CEOs in the banking world, that they would actually step out of, for example, Basel and things like that. Would they stick with the agreements, or would they go at it alone? The, the agreements are not very binding in the sense that Basel is a conspiracy to do little. So I think the real fear of the CEOs is that we might actually get regulation that is meaningful, uh, and, and that's, that's what we need. So I actually think that um, Basel is almost irrelevant because uh, it's designed not to be very binding. Right. Every single bank executive would throw you out of the office with this book. Why does Moynihan, Corbett, Diamond, why do they hate this book? Are you, uh, I, I'm not no, sure they, if you're they, asking they or they telling taken, me. <laughs> they have taken regulation. Right. They agree with it. Exactly. They're doing with it. You say they're wrong. Why are they wrong? Well, for themselves, they may not be wrong. Remember, so first of all, they've got Basel III, which is really not very costly for them. Uh, secondly, on all the overhead costs, it's a big advantage. Small banks can't enter, can't compete with them. Now, I'm not saying that they're not paying for a, a lot of regulation. They are, but they've adjusted to it, and they see big uh, barriers to entry that are beneficial to the large banks. So I think that that's part of the reason that okay. you're seeing the, the CEOs being a little bit more uh, cooperative Very with good. the Charles, regulation. Charles Calamiro says Columbia reforming financial regulation.